let's go back to the Bangalore game. You've briefly talked about uh, that particular game. Let's look, go back to the squad and try and assess how they will approach this game. They know they've qualified. They pretty much know that getting to one and two now is going to be a pretty uphill task. How do they approach this game looking ahead to that Sharjah game? Yeah, I think you've got to go with the squad that's going to play in Sharjah. For me, Hasaranga, uh, you know, Garten, he's had a go of things. I'm not overly convinced. I, I'm not seeing a match winner there. Hasaranga, I think he's been in such good touch. Um, yeah, I, I personally would go that route. Uh, you know, I would definitely think of, of trying to get him included. And Dan Christian, I don't know, I mean, from a bowling perspective, Mm, you know, I would almost be tempted to go back to Carl Jamison. I think what Jamison does with his massive heart, you know, hitting straight back of a length at Charger, the ball staying down, I think that'll be more challenging to try and deal with than, than Dan Christian. And Christian, I mean, I, I saw a stat about his performance with the bat. It's, uh, it's only just been a couple of balls and it's been single figures at best. So um, I don't think there's a massive round of confidence there. And if you want them to play in the big match, you have to get them a game before. So I would say that those would be the two changes for me. Yeah, four balls is all he's played, Dan Christian, for all the build-up. Yes, he had that two-wicket spell. But the fact is, as Sean said, uh, after seeing the, what Lockie Ferguson did here, Countryman brings height, brings pace, Kyle Jameson and Hasaranga compensates for the extra batting if you do want it, assuming you're taking out Garten and taking out Dan Christian to bring in these two joy. I mean, I completely agree with Sean. I mean, there's no question at all. To not play Hasaranga when you have the talent of the quality of Hasaranga sitting in your reserves, you're going to play on a ground like Sharjah. To not play him seems, I mean, I would definitely play him, especially given the fact that you're going to play after this in Sharjah because you're going to end up in third, fourth place. I, I see the very little chance for Bangalore to end up in first or second. They also have to do some very improbable mathematics to end up there. So, my point is that if you're sure that your next game is Sharjah, you have to play Hasaranga tomorrow and get him ready for Sharjah. And, uh, you know, Dan Christian simply hasn't done enough. And again, I believe that Dan Christian going there, they had a sort of batting lineup is that decided, saying that, okay, Virat and Devdat will open. And then you have uh, Shrikar Bharat at three. Bharat out there, Bharat, Bharat at three, Maxwell, De Villiers, Shahbaz Ahmed. You've got something going. Now you've just messed it up a bit and it hasn't worked for you. Go back to what the stability you had and get Bharat back at number three and let's see where you go from there because Dan Christian the move to move Dan Christian up hasn't worked for you let's face it I Just also one. think De Villiers, De Villiers needs to get more time I, uh, you know I mean I know he question. didn't I know he didn't get them over the line last night but I mean he'll be pretty disappointed because 12 of three and he, he crashes a six he, he would have been almost expected to hit a boundary in the next two deliveries so he'll be a little bit disappointed but I just think it's too much to ask of the individual just to come in with those a few months of deliveries. Uh, give him a little bit more time. Um, you know, him and Max are batting together probably from eight or ten overs on, you know, is, is more ideal than, than them messing around with the top order and then making them come in late. Yep, that was my final question. Sean Pollock's answered it. So I think with those two possible international changes and maybe a little tweak in the batting order, which they could possibly experiment with in match number 56, we shall see what Bangalore's plans are. As far as the opposition is concerned, well, uh, again, we've talked a lot about uh, Delhi and how they're nice and settled, but you don't want to break that winning habit. You don't want to break a winning combination yet. Perhaps do you see any rest for anyone? Sean, I'm going to come to you first because the big question is Kakiso Rabada, Anrich Nokia. Rest either of them? You might do. You might do just in case you give another person a game. I think the big thing is Marcus Stoinis. Where is he at? Uh, I think that's the balance that they want. That's the hitting power that they want to, to come in at number six. So if he's capable of um, getting out and showing that he's fit enough for the rest of the tournament, then I think that's the opportunity to get him in. Otherwise, besides that, I, I wouldn't... Uh, I mean, it's all up to you. If they're niggles, rest them. Uh, if they aren't niggles, maybe keep them going. It's only four overs. The continuity, um, the, the run out on that ground before the big knockout tournament or part of the tournament happens, I think that's vitally important. And everyone knows their roles. You know, you just keep the roles. If there is someone with a niggle, try and get them to fill that role for them. But otherwise, just join us. Can he be fit? 
because I think he is a big part for them. Well, uh, if uh, Nicholas Puran became poor run, then uh, Shimron Hetmyer became Shimron Hitmyer, Joy. And finally for mm-hmm. Delhi, they'd be satisfied with the man with the blue hair now, not golden anymore, has been delivering for them. They dropped Steve Smith last time around, brought in Ripple Patel. They've got an f- overseas slot available. Sam Billings, a possibility for you? No, not really. I mean, not for any other reason, but because this, this unit is going well. And unless they want to rest somebody or want to save somebody of Nichols, I, I don't think they want to change anything. They're on a good wicket. They know what they're doing. Everyone knows their role. I mean, I was surprised when Ripple Patel walked in ahead of Lalit Yadav. But clearly, there's somebody that they have faith in and they want to play. So let's see where it goes. I, I'm I'm surprised because Lalit Yadav, by chance, if they miss out on you know qualifying from Dubai and they need to play that, you know, my, this thing in Sharjah, play a next match in Sharjah, then you know he might be useful for another spinner to you know come in and bowl a couple of overs. But you know, uh, stranger things have been known to happen. This is a really solid unit, and so far, still looking like the best unit in the tournament. So let's. I wouldn't mess too much with it. Well, they certainly have the other bright spark. We'll finish off our preview to that game with him. Uh, Sean is Aksar Patel. Uh, certainly pushing for a spot in uh, and has been for a while in that uh, Indian team. But for now, he'll be focusing on just Delhi, this game and then the playoffs. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of our picks. Uh, he just delivers, doesn't he? Yeah, with the bat, with the ball in the field, um, he's he's really coming to his own. I think he's, he's just unlucky that there's a guy called Ravinder Jadeja um, floating around and he doesn't get as much exposure at the international level at this format as he could. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll be playing his part once again and, and would be a, a massive part in the rest of the tournament. 